All right, so we are going to work on this brand new pattern. It is a collab by Needle and Anchor and Jumping Mouse. So first I'm gonna show you how I prepare a new pattern. Um, normally I would laminate as well my pieces, but for the purposes of this video, we won't be laminating. So I've printed all of my pattern pieces on cardstock and I can link the cardstock in the description below that I use. I love it, it's colorful, makes things fun. You'll need a glue stick, a pair of scissors that are for paper cutting, not fabric scissors as we know, and a roll of tape. So let's get started. This pattern does have some piecing so we'll take the first four pieces out of here are all going to end up making one piece. So what we'll do is um, I'm going to start by cutting them out on this pattern. She's actually got a really cool feature. So she's got these dashed lines and this is for connecting the pattern pieces. Um, normally, if that's not there, then I would just choose one side and leave that uncut when I'm joining patterns together, or pattern pieces, sorry. But she gives us this, so that's awesome. Okay, once you have all of your pieces cut out, now we're gonna go ahead and work on piecing the pattern piece together. So we're gonna lay it out. And you're gonna be matching up the pieces here. Okay. So now I'm going to just start gluing and taping. So I'm just going to glue within the dotted lines, the dashed lines, up to the solid line. And then I'm going to bring these together and I'm going to match up the circles with the A. And then from there, I'm going to place some tape to hold everything nicely. And I do that on the front and then I flip it over and tape on the back as well. And when I'm gluing, I don't want to get glue on my mat. So I just use a piece of scrap paper. Just making sure you're matching up the circles with the pattern piece letter in it. All right, last piece. And the last piece is gonna fit right up in there really nicely. At least it should if you've done everything correctly. And tape the back part. And you can use as little or as much tape as you want. All right, and then you have pattern piece A. So also when you're cutting it out, before you start taping everything together, you just wanna measure your test square. So it should be exactly, let me move it this way. It should be exactly two inches line to line. If it's even, just a hair off, then your pieces won't be accurate. Um, so just keep that in mind. Make sure that you do measure that test box first. So I'm gonna do that with 
all of the pieces that are included in here um, with the exception of the measure and cut pieces. So there's quite a few pieces that are long, narrow rectangles. Um, and I won't be putting those pieces together. I didn't realize they were in there until later, which is totally fine. Um, but I'm gonna pull those out and I, I won't be doing those. So these, so there's going to be um, strap pieces, top straps, bottom straps, the dangle top strap, bottom press feet strap, um, hidden connector facing, handle connectors, bag handle cuff, and middle bottom, as well as a zipper pocket um, and double welt pocket facing, these three pieces. I'm not actually gonna put these together. Um, I would rather measure and cut those pieces than cut them out with the scissors by hand and then tape them together and trace them. I don't enjoy doing it that way. Um, so if you don't want these pages to print, you'll print pages 41 through 53. And those will be all the pieces that you'll need to actually assemble um, or that aren't perfect measure and cut pieces. So I'm gonna set these to the side. We won't work on those. And then from here, we're just gonna keep on going. All right, 
So now we have our exterior panel A, and you'll cut two interior or two exterior, and then um, if needed, two woven interfacing. Um, then you have the lining bottom piece K. Again, you'll cut two lining pieces, and if necessary, two woven interfacing. We have our bag base, you'll cut one piece of exterior, and then at the dashed line, you're going to cut a piece of heavy, Decoville Heavy or Peltex, and then it also has the purse feet placement for you as well. Uh, and then there's the lining top, and it has the snap placement. Um, you'll cut two pieces of exterior contrast at the full pattern piece, as long as um, as well as a woven interfacing piece as needed. Then at the dash line, you're also going to cut two pieces of Decoville white. And I think these pieces are all just half inch. Yeah, so the interfacing will be a half inch smaller on all sizes, all sides than your actual pattern piece. Then there is the bottom accent piece C. You'll cut two contrasting and two woven interfacing if needed. It also has the strap placement because we do have a lot of straps on this bag and it's going to be beautiful and amazing. So then there's the bottom accent facing piece and the top accent facing piece. You'll cut two facing fabric pieces of each one. And then this is the top accent piece. And I do believe this is the handle placement as well, as long as, as well as the dangle top strap. So you'll cut two pieces of exterior contrast. Here's a reminder to change your rotary blade. I just changed mine because I have no idea how long it's been. Um, so there's your friendly reminder. All right, let's get cutting. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, this is a really big piece of fabric. So to help manage the fabric, I'm going to lay my piece on here. And then with my rotary cutter, I'm going to just rough cut it out. Not too much extra, but a little. And then I can put the big piece of fabric away. And now you have two pieces that are much more manageable to work with. Um, so this is a cotton canvas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and press both of these pieces. And then I will also cut a piece of woven interfacing. And I will fuse everything together. So I'm going to go ahead and press these pieces before I put any interfacing on them. Then I will fuse some cotton interfacing, just some SF-101. And we'll be back to cut this out. All right, once you have your panel pressed, I am going to lay out my SF-101. It's not SF-101, but it's an equivalent. Um, and there's all kinds of shops. I'm honestly not sure where this one is from anymore. Um, but I will look for a couple of shops that I have gotten from, and I will link their woven interfacing in the description. So now I'm just cutting out a piece of woven interfacing of your choosing to kind of match my rough cut piece. And then I am going to go ahead and put that on my heat press. And then I will go ahead and cut out my pattern piece based on that. So that's what I have. I'm going to take that over to the press and press that and I'll be back. Okay. And so while my other main panel is being pressed at the heat press, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with this one. So I'm going to just kind of lay it flat and cut around my piece. And then I have this and I'm going to go ahead and press this one too. Okay, once you have everything pressed, go ahead and flip your piece over. My piece is not directional. But I have this little bump in my fabric and interfacing that I want to try to avoid if I can um, or have it in the seam allowance at the very least. I don't know if I pressed it too long or what happened, but 
Either way. So my piece is a little crinkly, probably from piecing it together, no big deal. I'm gonna hold it in place. And I just like to trace onto the inner casing. Um, I don't trust myself to cut it out nicely with a rotary cutter. I've tried it, never goes well. So it's easier if I just trace it. And then I will just use my rotary cutter with my ruler to cut the piece out at the end. So you're gonna cut two of these out, one on each panel. So that's what we're left with. And I will rotary cut that as soon as I am done with this piece. Also, make sure you pay attention to where your salvage is. Um, it, you can use a salvage, just make sure if you do, it'll be in the seam allowance for sure. Um, you don't want to accidentally have it on the front of your bag or the back. So same thing, just gonna repeat that with the other panel. So once you have that, go ahead and cut it out however you're most comfortable. For me, I will be rotary cutting it. with my fresh blade. Oh no. <laughs> oh, life is great. I just cut a piece of pattern. Oops, see, love that for me. We'll just tape it back together. It'll be fine. It's a good reminder though, pay attention to what's underneath your fabric, um, as in there shouldn't be anything. Just gonna make sure nothing else is under there. Perfect, okay. While I'm here, I'm also going to mark the centers of my pattern piece at the top as well as at the bottom. And I'm just gonna make a tiny snip, make sure it stays within the seam allowance. And that'll just help line things up at the end. Um, sometimes it's really not necessary, but I find anytime I don't do it is when I really needed it. So it's easy just to do right now. All right, we'll set that to the side and do this one. There are our two main panels. I've been dying to cut into this fabric, so it's, it's gonna be beautiful, I can't wait. Set those to the side. Next, I'm gonna start doing the measure and cut pieces um, with my exterior accent. Those are going to be Ooh, we have thunderstorms coming today. Sure you're paying attention to the measurements and the pattern or that you've printed the pieces and you're going to be cutting that way. I did not have a nice straight edge, so I cut my first piece just a little wide. And almost cut my second piece too short, so pay attention. 
goodness, this fabric cuts so beautifully. I will need to clean up the edges of these pieces um, just a little bit, but I can do that all at once. Okay, I'm just gonna trim this up so that I have a nice straight edge on my vinyl to work with going forward. You're gonna be cutting a lot of strips. We'll count them out at the end, how many total you'll have cut, but it definitely will be a large amount. It's easier for you, you could always draw these out if you have a limited amount of vinyl or anything like that. Um, and you don't wanna take a chance of not having enough of your preferred material, I would suggest drawing it all out first so that you know you can fit everything on it. Um, I know something that a lot of designers are starting to do is actually include um, projector files. So you can, if you have a projector, project the pieces down onto your vinyl and you'll A, see if it fits, and then B, you don't have to cut out pattern pieces like we did at the beginning. You can just draw it or cut it right on there. So we did. So these are bottom strap one. You'll have four of these. Bottom strap two, you'll have four of these. And there's dangle top strap F. You should have two of these. And then this is bottom purse feet strap piece G. You should have four of these. I'm gonna pile these up. And then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna clean all these up. This is my leftover. All right, and then we have four of top strap number one, piece D, and four of top strap number two, piece double D. So we'll set all those to the side. I'm just gonna look and see. There's a couple other pieces. All right, so then I'm gonna cut the bag handles, and these are gonna be interesting handles. I love the way it shows it in the design. So there's one. We're gonna be cutting four different pieces to the specific measurements in the pattern. enjoy cutting rectangular pieces of fabric, this is the pattern for you. All right, also while I'm here with these pieces, 
I'm going to be drawing a line down the center. Ballpoint pen is fine. Don't push hard. You don't want it to somehow come through the front. So I'm going to draw a line down the center of each one. And then I'm going to place a piece of half inch double sided tape right down the center. And that's going to help me with folding and creating the handles. So place your tape right down that line. If you don't have half inch, you could put a piece of quarter inch to either side of the line, eighth inch, whatever you have. So I'm going to do that with all four pieces that I just cut for the handles. So then I have four handle connectors and four bag handle cuff pieces that I need to cut. So I'm going to cut those now. One roll of vinyl actually might be enough. I was worried that it wouldn't be. Um, and I thought for sure I would end up needing two, but I may not. So let's go ahead and cut these. Get four of these connectors. All right, so I have four handle connectors, piece Q, those are all cut. And then we're gonna do the bag handle cuffs. So we need four of these as well. So close. And there's five bag handle cuff pieces. And everything else is a pattern piece now. Okay. Yep, everything else for the exterior is a pattern piece now. So now what I'm gonna do is I have my pile of pattern pieces here. So these are facing fabrics, so not that. So this has cut two contrast exteriors. The pieces are kind of piling up everywhere. There's a lot of pieces to this bag, but they're not hard pieces. I want to make sure I can get all of this. So we're having projector would be amazing. I do not have a projector, nor do I have any plans to get a projector. Um, but still, it, it would be cool. Someday, maybe. Even if you don't have a projector, ooh, hello. And the designer includes projector files. You can see, um, sometimes they'll tell you how it's formatted. So um, there's one designer I know that gives projector files and she formats it so that it'll fit on an 18 inch roll of vinyl. Um, well, it's arranged so that the pieces are arranged on there so that they'll fit on an 18 inch piece of vinyl, which is really kind of nice because she's done the guesswork for you. Um, you know for sure if you lay your pattern pieces out in this way and cut them that they will all fit. So even without a projector, it's still beneficial because you can see exactly how you should cut your pieces in order to get them all out on one 18 inch roll. Last piece, so we're gonna cut or draw, then cut two of these. Just be mindful with this piece if you want to take a rotary cutter to it. This piece has a slight peak on the bottom. It kind of looks flat, but it's not actually flat. So I 
All right, that's all our pieces. From vinyl. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these out. And then we'll move on to interfacing. We'll cut those pieces. And everything was able to fit on just one roll of vinyl, so that's awesome. I love when that happens with patterns. With these accents, um, since I haven't made this bag before, I'm not going to snip centers on anything because I don't know, honestly, if it's raw edge construction for all of these accent pieces or what. Um, so I'm going to better safe than sorry. I'm not going to snip centers on anything just in case it is raw edged. Then I haven't ruined my piece and have to break out my other roll of this. I do only have two rolls. I think I cut one too many. Or not enough. Uh, yeah, I did. I cut one too, one too many of these. So we just won't cut that one out. That one's scrap. Whoops. So I'm going to put these all together. Just going to clip them together so I know which piece is which. And the accent pieces don't require any interfacing, which is nice. And then we will need some interfacing for the base as well as the lining top piece. So we'll cut those next. I cut that out anyway, didn't I? I'm such a weirdo. Oh well. This one um, and the base one, you can find the centers on those. I'm just not sure about the accent pieces. I don't know how they get together yet. So I would definitely suggest finding the centers and marking that before you apply any interfacing. It'll be a lot easier. And we will need to punch out these magnet holes too um, at some point so that we can make markings as well as the purse feet holes. All right, next up is interfacing. All right, so earlier I said we were done cutting out straight pieces, but I lied, not on purpose. Um, I forgot that we need to cut middle bottom strap piece H. So we need two pieces of those. Um, you'll still be able to get everything out of one piece or out of one roll, especially if you don't cut this piece twice like I did. Um, so I'm just going to cut that out. This ruler's not big enough. I'm gonna cut those each out now, not cutting other things. And I have gone ahead and labeled on the backs to the letter number. Um, she does also give some really convenient pieces within the pattern that you could use to clip 
to your pattern pieces to keep everything organized. I just did not print them. So this is going to be piece H. And I'll cut one more of those and I can get it out of here. If you plan better, you can get it all out of one roll. Not a big deal. I have another roll and I only need like an inch and some change out of it. Um, it'll give it a nice clean edge on this piece of vinyl. All right, now we're going to move on to our Decoville light pieces. So we need two pieces of Decoville light for our lining top panel. And you could do a couple of things. So the Decoville light needs to be cut at the dashed line. What you could do is you can cut it like draw it on here roughly. You could draw the exact piece, which I think is what I'm gonna do. And then just go ahead and measure in how much you're gonna take off. You're gonna take off a half an inch. So draw in half an inch or you could just print the pattern piece twice and cut one at the dashed line and one not at the dashed line basically that would probably be easiest I'm gonna cut this piece out and i do like to keep my scraps um I tend to use them for interfacing near strap anchors, stuff like that. So I keep all my Decoville scraps, heavy and light. All right, let's see how we did. Good fit, perfect. All right, so now I'm gonna trace this piece and cut one more. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark my centers on here just to make applying the Decoville light a little bit easier and increase our odds of getting it centered. So we have our centers snipped and I'm just going to draw a line from one part to the next. And then I will mark my centers on my Decoville light and then I'll lay it on here. You could mark the centers on the edges, but I'm, I can just eyeball that part. So I'll go ahead and repeat that with the other piece. And then I'm gonna take them over to the press and press these on and I'll be right back. All right, so these are fused on. We're in good shape with those. And then we're gonna use a piece of Decoville Heavy for the base. So I'm gonna just do the same thing. Um, actually, because this one's rounded, I am gonna cut I don't measure curves very well and I want it to be accurate. So I'm gonna cut on the dashed line. And then next time I make the bag, I'll just reprint a base piece. And I'll have one of each. And you can use Decoville Heavy or Peltex, whatever you have. You could probably do foam. Um, you could do a couple layers of Decoville Light if you don't have Heavy. I'm trying to think what else you could use in place of Decoville Heavy. That's probably it. All right, now we're going to cut our Decoville. Okay. 
All right, so I'm gonna take the base piece and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to draw my centers on there. This time I am gonna do all four because it is an oval. I just wanna make sure I... And I'm gonna fold the Decoville heavy in half and do the same exact thing. Just cut out notches. All right, and then I'm going to fuse this um, just like that. All right, so I've got that piece fused. So now before I go any further, I'm gonna punch the holes for my purse feet. And I can link the hole punch that I used. So I'm gonna place it on here, and then I'm gonna just draw the dots the hole and I'm using purse feet with prongs I think so I'm not gonna punch these holes or anything but I just want to have them marked out for later and then we can do the same thing with this one so I'm gonna just punch the hole on the pattern piece I always like to put my markings on the back side of my pattern just in case if possible. All right, all that's left is to cut my lining pieces. I have a couple of scraps, so I'm actually gonna see what I can get out of scraps first before I go on and cut. Actually, I'm looking at this, so this, I'm gonna come back to these bottom accent facing pieces. They may or may not need to be cut out of that vinyl. I'll have to take a look to read the instructions. I haven't read the instructions yet. Sorry. All right, so let's go ahead and use this scrap up. Scrap, it's, I mean, it's a giant scrap, but still, it's a scrap nonetheless. Let's use it. And we're gonna cut two of these lining pieces. So we'll do this two times. And if you're going to use your rotary cutter, just be very careful up here because this is not all the way straight, it does jar off to the right. Um, so don't accidentally cut that piece off because you do need it. So right here, it veers out. I can't use my rotary for that because I would most definitely cut it right off. Same thing when you're doing this one. On this side, just be careful. And I am going to mark my centers while I'm here on the top and bottom. So I will go ahead and cut one more of those. And then I'm going to do one zipper pocket facing at the dimensions in the pattern. And one double welt pocket facing. Same thing, dimensions in the pattern. So these are the welts, and because it's a light fabric, I want to be really, really careful writing on it. Only up in like the teeny tiny corner am I going to put the pattern piece letter. Um, so now we have a zip, zipper pocket top. That's also a measure and cut piece. And we're going to need just one of these. I'm going to mark the centers on this as well. I did take a peek at that part of the pattern, and I love the way that she puts her zipper pocket together. And I may very well just adopt that process for all of my bags. So then we need two double welt pieces. My iron's being real mouthy back there. So I'm gonna cut one more double belt piece. So I'm not gonna do any hidden connector facings because I'm using vinyl. So I don't need a facing for those. And I'm gonna need a zipper pocket piece and a double belt main pocket pocket main piece. Those are pretty big pieces. So I am going to bust out my 
big piece, but I got most of it all out of scraps. That's impressive. Okay, guys, so sorry. My phone died and I didn't realize it. So um, all you missed was me cutting another one of the lining panels. And then I did all the measure to cut welting pieces. So um, I did have to come back. Remember I was telling you these top accent facing pieces. Um, they do need to be cut out in vinyl. Well, I mean, they don't need to be, but I am going to cut them out of my matching vinyl. So they match the accent um, for the front. So just getting these done. All right, so I have my top accent facing pieces. Actually, all you missed was me cutting the other lining panel, main panel, and then the zipper pocket pieces. So no big deal. All right. Those are all set. All right, now we are going to prep the straps and handle connectors. So that is all of those measure and cut pieces that I have. So it's gonna be piece D, double D, E, double E, F, G, H, and Q. All right, so these are piece D and double D. So then I have E and double E. F, G, H, and Q. So you're gonna place double-sided tape or fabric glue um, down both sides of the center line. So you're gonna make a center line on each one of these pieces. And then you're gonna place double-sided tape down the center. Or you could place double-sided tape down each side of the center line, however you prefer to do it, depending on if your machine can go through double-sided tape or not. All right, so I'm all done drawing lines down the center. Now I am going to place double-sided tape right down the center of these lines. All right, <clears throat> so the last part of prepping is going to be to fold all of these pieces. So you're gonna take the paper backing off of the double-sided tape on every single one of these pieces that you just did. And then you are going to tightly fold your vinyl right up to the line on one side. Press that. And then you are going to butt this right up against the line or against the vinyl on the other side. Then you are going to top stitch all of these at an eighth of an inch away and then you're also for piece Q you're also going to do a quarter of an inch away um, so that will be the end of this video because that is all of the prep um, you'll just you don't want to sit here and watch me fold all of these pieces into the halfway mark um, then I will start sewing in the next video but um, that is everything for the prep um, Oh, and then also I'll show you the hardware that I'll be using too. So this does require a lot of hardware. So a lot of hardware is required uh, if you wanna do the full on way. Um, there is a minimalist way to do it. And if you don't have all the hardware or don't wanna use all the hardware or don't like it with all the hardware, you could definitely do that. But I am going to show you how you do it with all of this hardware. So you're gonna have number five zipper tape as well as your zipper poles. Uh, you're gonna have five bag feet, those are optional. You're going to have two slim 18 millimeter magnets um, and then you'll have your logo tag if you have one. Then you're going to need 12 three quarter inch strap end pieces. 12 three quarter inch sliders and two three quarter inch 
flat snap hooks, two three quarter inch D rings, and four inch and a half sliders. All right, so that's everything, guys. I'll see you in the next video, and we will sew this bag.